Hello there, welcome back to another video where I share my wisdom of astronomy with you. Keep watching if you want to live your dream and make a career in astronomy. Let me start with the most basic one, something that I am doing, an academic career. This means getting a PhD, a couple of postdocs and finally getting a teaching position or a research position at some university or institute. This is probably the longest path but also the one that you might want to take if you want to do the research and reveal the secrets of the universe by yourself. Getting a PhD in or outside India is a task. Typically you need to give competitive exams after your masters like GATE, JEST, NET, etc. if you are applying within India. If you are trying to apply for PhD positions outside India, you may need to give exams like the GRE or the subject GRE. Once you clear any of these exams, every institute has its own selection criteria that you must pass in order to apply for the PhD admission. Normally in every PhD admissions, there will be one or two interviews. In these interviews, the committee is trying to understand your aptitude for research and also what you want to work on and if they have those facilities and the faculties to advise you. Now, I already have made a couple of videos about how to get the best out of your PhD, the life of a PhD scholar and interviews with researchers. I'm going to link all of them down below, so make sure to check them out. If you don't want to take such a long path but you still want to be part of astronomy maybe not research then fear not you can always take a look at the space science side of things now this option may be better suited for people who have an engineering background there are jobs related to spacecraft design uh, aircraft pilot robotics obviously electrical and mechanical engineering aerospace engineering software developer data engineering and so many more. I have a big list and there are research positions available in this sector as well. Now the best example of space sector jobs in India is of course ISRO and they regularly advertise scientists position for people with a master's or even a PhD. Another way of entering ISRO is via the Indian Institute of Space Science and Technology, the IIST in, in Trivandrum. Now if you have the science background but you still want to go to the site, do not worry. You can always do internships and you know attend courses online even uh, to make your CV look better and feel more competent towards these jobs. Next one, if you do not want to really go into the space science kind of things but want to be close to astronomy, maybe not a PhD, then you can always go and work for the telescope facilities. So to understand the underlying physics of astronomical objects, astronomers like us use different kinds of telescopes to observe those objects so far away from us at different wavelengths. Now here's the catch behind observing the universe at different wavelengths or frequencies. Observing the universe at different wavelengths gives us an idea of what physical process might be happening over there. For example, when a star explodes, the emission can be seen at optical wavelengths. When a black hole accretes matter, the signatures can be seen at the UV wavelengths or the X-ray. The emission from a neutron star's poles can be seen at radio wavelengths. These facilities of course have a number of opportunities because we need people to take care of the telescopes and to look at the engineering side of things. Now if you are into teaching, I have a good one for you. You can always go towards science outreach. Science communication is a very important part of Academia. With all the new developments that we have been making over the past decades, it is necessary to spread them to the general public. This can be done in a lot of ways. People like me like to use YouTube as the platform to spread the word of science. But you can actually make money out of this career, unlike me. Science communication is generally done by uh, planetariums, by universities, private institutions, etc. These are the places where people who can simplify science in terms which are understandable by the general public are needed. Bigger organizations like NASA have a dedicated team for science outreach. In India, people like uh, Dr. Ratna Srinandivada, who passed away last year, used to do science outreach. Also, you may definitely have heard names like Neil deGrasse Tyson or Carl Sagan, who are preachers of science. I personally have an inclination towards science outreach. Therefore, our team organizes events for people in and outside the campus. In these events, we teach people or students or children 
about various things that are happening in the universe like the birth of a star, the death of a star, the planet formation, the um, types of galaxies we have <laughs> and a lot of other things. We also use this opportunity to answer questions that people may have. If you have any questions you can always write them down in the comment section and I will try to answer to the best of my abilities. The fifth option that you can look out for is science journalism. This one is slightly different but again uh, rewarding and keeps you at a safe distance, healthy distance from your favorite subject. Science journalists report news and new findings and other information related to science to the general public. This involves writing informative summaries of the recent findings. For example, the gravitational wave detection back in 2015. As part of the job, you'll also be consulting the expert scientists and researchers and convey the information to a non-expert audience in a smoother way. Your speciality would be to break down and simplify the complex ideas and the scientific jargon without losing the accuracy. This kind of career would typically require a science degree with a strong background in writing. These kinds of jobs are typically available for news channels, space missions, observatories, etc. The secret to acing any of these interviews is confidence. Now, I don't mean the I know everything kind of overconfidence. Take deep breaths and answer the questions to the best of your abilities. You can always take a couple seconds before you start answering the questions. Use that time to either relax yourself or think what you're going to speak. Also, this is a personal opinion, but if you do not know the answer to something, just say that, be honest, instead of you know, guessing and eventually saying something which is not good. In these interviews, the panel is usually trying to understand your approach to the problem rather than the answer. So they are not looking for you to have a correct answer, but rather the method that you are going to follow to get the answer. I hope this list was helpful in finding your dream career in astronomy. Let me know which one suits you the best and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.